Thanks for joining us for this Zero Waste video series segment. The Zero Waste video series is organized by Waste Free Advocates, formerly Recycling Advocates, an Oregon-based nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering and connecting Oregon communities to minimize overconsumption and waste. With this video series, we are seeking to not only inform folks who are interested in learning about zero waste efforts within our region, but also to connect to entrepreneurial government and community advocates who to help strengthen our growing network so that we can help each other in growing these positive and impactful practices and infrastructure. Please write in your questions and suggestions in the comments where we're going to be continuing the conversation. Hello, my name is Lana Steenstra. I'm um, the Recycling Modernization Act Project Manager at the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality. And I'm here today to talk about the Plastic Pollution and Recycling Modernization Act. Thanks very much for having me. So a uh, quick recap on the process and how we got here. So the recycling modernization effort began over three years ago in response to the international recycling market challenges, which I'm sure you've all heard about. DEQ, uh, my agency, convened the Recycling Steering Committee with experts from across the industry to consider solutions and make a recommendation to modernize our decades-old recycling system. The committee's goal was to optimize environmental benefits, create a resilient system, and restore public trust in recycling. The group solicited feedback and engaged with many other recycling system stakeholders along the way, and the whole effort was supported by extensive research. In September 2020, the committee made a consensus recommendation to improve and stabilize Oregon recycling programs. DEQ then drafted a legislative concept for the Oregon legislature to consider based on this proposal and continued discussions with committee members and many other interested parties in the process. During the 2021 legislative session, DEQ continued working with interested parties to refine, amend, and support the bill until it was ultimately passed by the legislature in June. Governor Kate Brown signed the bill into law on August 6th, and it goes into effect on January 1st, 2022. So now I'll give an overview of what the law does and then discuss implementation and timelines. First, for some context, I wanna mention that the Recycling Modernization Act is aligned with DEQ's 2050 vision for materials management. One of the Recycling Steering Committee's priorities was to create a system that would optimize the benefits of recycling considering life cycle impacts and costs. The new law does this, and it updates Oregon statute to support DEQ's approach to materials through life cycle thinking and prioritizing the environmental and social benefits of recycling activities. So from a high level, here are the key challenges in today's recycling system and how the Recycling Modernization Act addresses them. To reduce public confusion, the new law provides better public education and creates one statewide recycling collection list. To improve inequities throughout the recycling system, it sets up a system that better meets the needs of unserved and underserved communities, especially people living in apartments and rural communities. To address the lack of producer funding to support recycling programs and historically unstable and volatile recycling markets, it requires producers to share responsibility with local governments and ratepayers, and thus stabilizes costs and takes that volatility off local governments and ratepayers' shoulders. To address a trend in Oregon of creating more garbage and recycling less over time, the legislation will increase the quantity and quality of recycling as it becomes easier and more accessible across the state. It also creates incentives to use fewer materials and significant funding to reuse materials and prevent waste at the source. And where we currently have no guarantee of responsible recycling, the new law requires producers and recycling processors to ensure that material collected for recycling is actually recycled and in ways that protect the environment and human health. So here is how the Recycling Modernization Act achieves those solutions and more. In a nutshell, the law creates a shared responsibility recycling system that builds on the parts of Oregon's existing programs that work well and fills in the gaps where it needs improvement. It includes elements of a framework called extended producer responsibility for the first time, and it requires producers of packaging and paper products to be accountable for responsible management of their products. 
It also does more than support recycling through extended producer responsibility. Some of the new requirements of the law are on local governments and recycling processors. And as I mentioned, it advances recycling and related activities in a way that aligns with the 2050 vision, in a way that helps conserve resources, protects the environment, and enhances well being for everyone in Oregon and beyond. So, producers of covered products, which include packaging, printed paper, and food serviceware, will join and make payments to a producer responsibility organization, or PRO. The PRO will fund necessary upgrades and perform other functions that will make Oregon's recycling programs more convenient, accessible, and responsible. The Recycling Modernization Act is a shared responsibility model, as I mentioned. The producers are fully responsible for some defined elements that I'll go into and share in the responsibility for many others. Producer costs will be scaled based on what materials they use and how much they sell into Oregon. There are exemptions for small businesses, nonprofits, schools, and some others. And there are also exemptions for certain materials, such as containers covered by the bottle bill, on-farm packaging, industrial packaging, medicines, and some others. Local governments will maintain their role overseeing collection and education in their communities, and DEQ will oversee the recycling system and hold producers and other businesses accountable where necessary. A new advisory council made up of a range of stakeholders will review important system elements and advise DEQ and the PROs. So now let's get into the finer details of how this future system will work. Let's start by taking a look at how the new law will improve existing recycling programs. This includes recycling services provided by local governments as part of the Recycling Opportunity Act, namely the on-route or curbside collection of commingled recyclables from households and businesses, as well as drop-off depots at solid waste transfer stations. To update these existing programs, the new law creates several important improvements. First, there's a process whereby the state will establish one uniform statewide list of recyclable items to make recycling easier and clearer for everyone, including for people who speak languages other than English. DEQ will create this list with involvement from other stakeholders, and it will consider technological, environmental, economic, and social factors. Local governments and their designated collection service providers will continue to collect recyclables and will be required to collect the materials on that list. The PROs will pay the cost of transporting recyclables more than 50 miles to a processing facility or end market. So the uniform statewide list, coupled with the reimbursement of freight costs, will expand and better meet the needs of underserved communities around the state, especially rural Oregon. Local governments that are interested in expanding collection services may make use of producer funding for those startup costs, such as trucks and containers, as well as ongoing costs of operating new or expanded depots. Local governments will also be required to ensure that multifamily communities receive adequate service and that new construction and significant remodels have adequate space for containers and collection vehicles. Local governments will also implement programs funded by producers to reduce contamination in the recycling by households and businesses. DEQ will study and pilot these interventions and create a list of tested and cost-effective methods for local governments to work from. After materials are collected, they're typically sent to a commingled recycling processing facility. The law will require local governments to direct commingled materials to processing facilities that meet certain standards. DEQ will permit or certify and audit processing facilities, requiring them to meet new performance standards. These include standards for sorting quality, managing contamination, reporting on the final destination of materials, and paying workers a living wage and providing supportive benefits. The PROs will pay processing facilities two fees, one to offset the cost of removing contamination, and the other to offset the cost of meeting the new performance standards and also from the volatility of recycling commodity markets. Now let's look at a few other new services and requirements of the producers where they will have some greater operational responsibilities. 
At the same time that the state establishes the uniform statewide collection list, the state can also name some additional materials where the PROs are required to set up or enhance recycling systems for hard to recycle materials. They will also be required to meet collection and access standards for these materials. The purpose of this additional requirement is to capture those items that make sense to recycle, but don't belong in the commingled system. For example, film plastics are highly recyclable, but very difficult to collect in curbside collection programs. In parallel with that, the bill contains progressively increasing and enforceable recycling goals for plastic packaging up to 50% by 2040. The PROs will also work with other system participants to ensure that all materials collected for recycling, whether collected through the public commingled system or through one of these supplemental PRO run services, are recycled at responsible end markets. This will help us assure the people of Oregon that these materials will actually get recycled and in environmentally responsible ways. As you can see, this new law creates a truly shared responsibility approach where all recycling system participants have clear and designated roles. Importantly, it shares financial obligations between producers and ratepayers. DEQ estimates that in a typical year, producers will be paying about 28% of the new system's total cost while ratepayers will cover the rest. The fees that PROs pay to processors specifically will also stabilize the cost of recycling and ensure that ratepayers will get recycling services at a lower cost than disposal. There are a few other key components of the law that dive deeper into some of the other important elements of recycling and life cycle impacts of packaging. Over the first several years of implementation, DEQ will conduct a number of studies and report back to the legislature about whether PRO obligations should be expanded and funding provided to address issues including multifamily recycling conditions, equity in the recycling system, litter and marine debris, and how compostable packaging is handled. The legislation also repeals the current requirement that the chasing arrows be stamped on all rigid plastic packaging, and it creates a truth and labeling task force that will study the issue of misleading labeling and provide a report to the 2023 legislature. As I mentioned before, this new law prioritizes reducing the life cycle impacts of packaging. Besides the elements already covered, the new law also requires the 25 largest producers to conduct life cycle assessments of some of their products and share that information publicly. And it requires PROs to set their membership fees in a way that incentivizes more sustainable product design. Lastly, the producers will also fund programs that reduce the environmental impacts of covered products through means other than recycling, such as waste prevention and reuse. DEQ will administer this program, possibly through grants. So this will be a multi-year process of planning, research, implementing, and reporting. We have approximately four years to conduct a large amount of foundational work before the first PRO program plans are implemented in July 2025, including several studies, rulemaking, pilot testing, and creation of a new permitting and certification program, and more. So DEQ is now in the midst of implementation planning and is getting ready to hire new people to staff the program. In the remainder of 2021, DEQ will continue to plan implementation and the Truth and Labeling Task Force will also be appointed by the governor. In 2022, the law goes into effect on January 1st, and then after that, DEQ will hire our new staff. The Advisory Council will form and begin meeting quarterly, and the Truth and Labeling Task Force report is due in June. In 2023, the first rulemaking will take place. DEQ statewide needs assessment of local government interest in expanding collection services is due that year no later than July 1st. DEQ will also con conduct pilot projects for contamination reduction and studies for processor related fees. In 2024, the second rulemaking will take place. At some point, PROs will form and the first PRO program plans are due no later than March 31st, 2024. A public procurement assessment is due in May of that year, and the first equity studies and multifamily needs assessments are due no later than September 15th, 2024. 
These will be repeated every four years. Then by July 1st, 2025, individual producers must join a PRO and PROs must also begin implementing an approved program plan. Local governments will implement changes to collection programs, such as collecting the statewide list, and recycling processing facilities must obtain a permit or certification. So there will be formal opportunities where interested parties can be involved, such as rulemaking, the advisory council, and public comment periods related to PRO program plans and annual reports. There's a stakeholder interest form on DEQ's website where you can express interest in these opportunities. More details about implementation will be available early next year when we're further along with planning and hiring. So stay tuned to DEQ's website at this link, and there you can also sign up for our email list to receive updates. Thank you very much. Please join the conversation, which will continue in the comments section. So please don't be shy. Whether you have one question or 10, whether you represent a business or government or community, we all have ideas and connections to offer. This low waste and low consumption lifestyle is for everybody. Working together and doing our part will have lasting positive impacts on our planet and livability. You can help waste-free advocates in whatever way you like, from financial support to joining our board of volunteers. Visit wastefreeadvocates.org for links, and please follow, like, share, and subscribe to Waste Free Advocates to receive notifications of our events and future episodes of the Zero Waste video series that you won't want to miss. We hope to inspire you to inspire others through your positive influence, and remember that when you share what you know, and who you know, you multiply the good that you do. So thank you for tuning in and keep being an advocate for change in your local community.